We're going to start talking about innovations in communication. Communication is how we talk to each other. And innovation is something that was created to make things easier for us. You wouldn't believe it, but people used to write letters to each other. The Titanic, it was actually used as a ship to bring letters across the Atlantic Ocean and mail. Letters used to be written to each other and delivered on a Pony Express. A Pony Express is basically a person riding on a pony that delivers mail because the pony helps them move faster. So before this time, the 1830s, we didn't really have a way of communicating with each other. We take for granted today that we can just some, write a note to somebody and put it in their lunchbox. We can send somebody a message on Messenger. We can send them video messages. We can text people. Today, we have no idea what it was like to live in the past and how just being able to send a short message was amazing. People thought this idea was revolutionary. Samuel Morris studied the research of other scientists and learned that sounds could travel along thin metal wires. With that, he was able to come up with a new way to communicate other than writing letters. This invention was called the telegraph, and you can see the telegraph machine right there in the picture. This is a picture from the from 1844, so over time, things get better. So this is a little bit of a better model of the telegraph. He put a wire in Washington, D.C. that stretched to Baltimore, Maryland. Using special codes, he was able to send a message. This innovation was made in the 1830s. So this was amazing because you could send a message from one place to another. The cons or negative things about the telegraph is that your messages needed to be short, you needed to know the Morse code, and it was kind of slow compared to what we do today. So if you wanted to tell somebody, I'll see you at the baseball game tomorrow, you might just write, see tomorrow. The message had to be short to be able to send it, and you had to know the code. There's a video underneath this video that explains Morse code and the telegraph. It's really interesting to watch. I am now going to talk about the history of the telephone. Yep, that right there is a telephone. The telephone was created and patented by Alexander Graham Bell. That means people before could have made a telephone, but they didn't put their name on it. When you patent something, you are saying that it is your invention. Telephones today are still changing. Alexander Graham Bell was trying to discover how to send more than one message at a time over a telegraph wire. In the process, he realized that he could use an electric wire to send the sound of a human voice from one place to another. After he had done some final tinkering, Bell filed a patent for his electrical speech machine at the National Office near Washington, D.C. This machine later became known as the telephone. Although Bell has always gotten credit for inventing the telephone, a professor named Alicia Gray actually invented a similar contraption at around the same time. Bell barely beat Gray to the patent office in 1876. Here are some of our earliest telephones. The earliest telephones were just large boxes that attached to the wall. It was impossible to make a call through them without speaking to an operator first. So someone's job was be to be the operator, and they had to connect you to the person you wanted to talk to. During this time, there were no phone numbers because the operator would just connect you to the person. These are some more pictures and shows the progression of it over time. So here we add a piece that we can pick up to talk to somebody. 
Oh my gosh. And here is the big deal. This is when we get phone numbers to talk to each other. This is a rotary dial phone, which was created in the 1930s. People put their fingers in the holes and turn the dial to call someone. Now, the problem was, if you had messed up, you had to start all the way over. It was kind of hard to use. This phone was much smaller and allowed people to make calls to each other directly, not having to use the operator. It became known as the rotary phone because of the round dial at the center. At first, they could only hang on the wall. Later on, it became possible to place them on desks, countertops, and tables. Rotary phones were popular in homes and offices through the 1970s. Some people still like to keep them in their homes as antiques. My grandfather had a rotary phone in his house, and I always had trouble knowing how to turn the rotary phone to put somebody's phone number in. But for them, this was a big deal. Now, you guys thought smartphones were cool? Oh my gosh, look at this green phone here. Okay, this phone here, you can um, have a headset or a speaker phone, and you can make multiple calls at the same time. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was the best invention yet for people who are trying to communicate. It is a touch tone phone. Touch tone phones became available in 1963. They were not common in households and businesses until the 1980s when your teachers were born. These telephones were expensive to make and this meant that they were expensive for people to buy. In fact, telephone companies only made a small number of touch phones at first because they did not think most people would want to pay such high prices. Once they became more affordable, this became the phone that people used in their home. It was amazing because instead of turning the dial, you just push the button. Then in the 1990s, the most magical thing happened to my life. I used to have to use that push button phone and that really long curled cord and I would have to get the phone and I would have to bring it into my bedroom. And that I would have to stretch out that long cord to close the door and have privacy talking on the phone. When you were on the phone, you used to get a busy, busy signal because nobody could get a hold of you if you were using that telephone number. Then we came out with the cordless phone. The first cordless phone was really boxy. And eventually the model got thinner over time. But this was amazing for your teachers and I because we could take the phone into our room without having to stretch that long cord. Eventually we got call waiting. And then, can you believe it? The cell phone was born. And here, my friends, is the first cell phone that was created. Look at the size of that thing, weighing in at two and a half pounds with a battery of 20 minutes. So after 20 minutes, you couldn't talk anymore. It was dead. The first cell phone was created in 1983 when Miss Bass was born. It was $4,000 to purchase when it first came out. It was bulky and expensive, but this was an incredible innovation. Here we went from sending letters to messages that we typed on paper that we had to change to starting with a phone where we had to connect with an operator, then getting a push button phone, and then getting a cordless phone. And now we have a phone that we can take anywhere we go. For the first time, People could have a phone that could be taken anywhere. At the beginning, cell phones were usually used for business. Over time, cell phones became smaller and affordable. Now the public were able to have cell phones too. Other technologies were added to cell phones as well, such as cameras and the internet. So my first cell phone did not look like this. 
but it sure didn't look like what we have today. This baby here was the first cell phone, flip phone, that I had. When you were able to start sending messages, you had to use the number code to send a message. So if you wanted to send somebody by, you would have to type two, nine, three. So over time, this cell phone here was able to add camera features, was able to add a keyboard, and then was able to have internet on it. So it is amazing from the 1830s to today how much technology has changed. From sending a message that was in code to being able to search the internet and send people messages through texting with real printed messages is amazing. So today for your activity, you're gonna sort the difference between a cell phone and a telegraph. And I hope you enjoy watching the videos to help you learn more about our communication innovations over time. Next, we're gonna learn about television and radio. You guys have all these smart TVs. Imagine if you had no TV at all. That's what we'll talk about next time.